Get my cutter, get my torch. Pour a beverage and I step out on the porch. Grab a cigar, I love that view. I guess it's time for another poolside cigar review. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another weeknight edition of Poolside Cigar Reviews with Kirk. Tonight I'm coming at you with a cigar that's just too good not to share, and that is the Man of War Puro Authentico. This is a Corona size cigar, it's only made in the Corona. I believe there's a natural and a Maduro. I think this is the Maduro. I don't even know, you know, I, I, I don't pay attention to a lot of those things all that closely. Um, I just know what I like when I don't. I'm pretty sure this is the Maduro. But this is a very full cigar. So, for those of you fellas out there who think that only the manly men smoke the 6x60s, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, you're full of it. This will be one of the fullest cigars you ever smoke. This is just a flavor bomb, tons of pepper, tons of earth, super deep. Not that complex, but, I mean, big time flavor. Strength, I don't know. You know, I, I've said it before, but I haven't said it in a while. I'm not a very good judge of strength. Um... I don't get nicotine buzzes off cigars. I've never had a cigar make me lightheaded or nauseous. I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage, but I can smoke anything, any time of day. doesn't matter what's in my stomach. You know, it just hasn't happened. Now, do I ever sit and smoke eight cigars in a row? No. You know, I, I smoke until I'm done enjoying it, which is usually two cigars. You know, I, I saw smoke two cigars back to back, but very rarely will I have three. Unless I have people over and I'm drinking and doing other things, and then, you know, judgment kind of goes out the window sometimes. But, um, that's more of a side note. But this Puro Identico, great cigar, bargain stick. Um, I believe it's a CI exclusive. I think Manowar is, is exclusively Cigars International. This is the only Manowar I've ever smoked. I got a five pack of these off Cigar Bit for probably somewhere in the $15 range, plus or minus. It's awesome. I think you can get boxes of 10 off Cigar International regularly for the maybe $60 range, that sounds about right. And it's just it's just killer. You know, really great cigar. You can probably get it for cheaper if you watch it on sale or if you go to Cigar Bid. Um, but I love this cigar. So, if you're in the mood for a really full body cigar, if you like really full body cigars, if you haven't tried this man award, do it. It is a bargain stick, and um, I don't have anything bad to say about it. The story behind this is that it's AJ Fernandez's um, personal blend, but I've heard that story so often in the cigar industry, and I don't know if it's true or not. You know, just like, um, you know, Liga Pravada being Steve Saka's personal cigars, and you know, the Undercrown being the personal cigar of the, of the rollers of the Liga Privadas at Drew Estate. You know, all these... It's a nice story. It could be true. There's no reason to think it's not. You know, or at least have some... I'm sure it has some semblance of truth, but, you know, um, the story is that A.J. Fernandez smoked these fairly frequently, and, you know, the folks at CI would see him smoking these little Corona cigars and ask him what it was, and he never wanted to bring it to market, and they convinced him to bring it to market, and that's what this is. It's a nice story. I'm not going to call bullshit on it, because I have no idea, but um, I also wouldn't necessarily have bet on its factual accuracy either. I just don't know. It's awfully convenient. Um, but that's okay. I can suspend disbelief and, you know, enjoy it. Although, you know, that, that's really, that's, that's one thing that I try to, that I try to bring to this channel that I feel like I do, that not necessarily that I do a good job, but I always strive for with myself, is to identify the intrinsic quality of something. You know, we shouldn't be suckered in by a story of, really, should our, should our experience of this cigar really be any different if this is truly A.J. Fernandez's personal cigar versus A.J. Fernandez saying, hey, I'd like to blend a value, really full-bodied, Corona-sized cigar. I just want to keep the price point low. I want to make it really full bodied, not complex, but just just a little just a little ass kicker for a good price. 
should that should either of those stories, personal cigar or clearly targeted to a specific market, should it really matter? I don't think it should. I think the test should be when you light the cigar and when you smoke it, what does it do for you? That's the test to me. It shouldn't be, what did you pay for it? It shouldn't be, what does the band look like? What does the box look like? It shouldn't be, what does Cigar Aficionado say about it? What do what do the reviewers on YouTube say about it? You know, those assholes don't know anything. Um, you know, the, the, the true intrinsic value of the cigar is what it gives to you. And I think it, it, it takes effort. I really think it does. Um, and it takes experience. Um... To just really see past that stuff, you know, you, you you've got to smoke a lot of heavily marketed cigars, expensive cigars. You got to smoke a lot of no-name cigars, cheap cigars. I think once you get that experience, is really smoking that variety. That's something else that I preach a lot on this channel: is variety, branch out. If you smoke full-bodied stuff, smoke some mild stuff, smoke some medium stuff. Likewise, if you only smoke mild stuff, hey man, try some full stuff. It gives you it gives you perspective. And I think that's really important. Um, because with that, you either broaden your horizons and you learn that, hey, I like a lot more than I thought I did, which is great. I mean, wouldn't we all like to expand our horizons and broaden our taste? It really gives you a lot more options. Um, and not just in cigars, in life. Um, you know, you and I wouldn't want to live a life where I drank the same beer every day and smoked the same cigar every day. That's not, that's not what appeals to me. Um, so to me, if I can discover that I have broader tastes, I find it great when I taste a food that I hated as a kid, and I come back to it as an adult and I try it. Hey, that's really good. That's cool. You got like one more food in the bag that you can go to. Same thing with cigars or booze or cars. I don't know anything that makes you happy. Guns. But. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I guess that's really what I'm going for, is, is, is we should look for the intrinsic quality of a cigar. And, um, you know, not that I'm ever, you know, right or wrong, uh, because it's all subjective. Again, it's what it gives to you. The intrinsic quality, of a, uh, intrinsic quality of a cigar might be really high for me, and it might not be for you. If you don't like it, if you, if you smoke the cigar and you don't like it, it's not worth anything um, to you. And that's fine, because we've all got different tastes and preferences. It's kind of like, um, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but like Cuban cigars and um, Opus X, those are kind of two areas, at least in this country, in the United States, that are just kind of like... Oh man, that's, that's the pinnacle of cigars. Cuban cigars and Opus X. Man, if I could smoke anything, I'd smoke that all day. And I'll, and I'll tell you, um, I've had a good amount of Opus X. I won't say I've had a good amount of um, Cuban cigars. But, uh, but, uh, but I think I've had enough of both. I've probably had a few dozen of each. Uh, I, I think I have enough experience to say, you know what, to me, for one, I'll, I will take a Cuban cigar over an Opus X any day, generally. Opus X is very low on my list. Um, there's some really good ones that I do like, some Vitolas that I think are great. There's a lot of other ones that I think are just overpriced. Just garbage, you know? Um, and I'm not the only one who has these experiences, but you know, bad roll, bad burn, you know, poor draw, and, and lackluster flavors. Um, then again, that doesn't mean that I'm right. That's just my experience. But it, it just goes through of saying, like, it, it takes some experience to have the gall to say, you know what, this cigar that I paid $22 for that I really want to enjoy isn't that good. Um, and when that happens, it's almost like a veil is lifted. And you can kind of see things for how, what they are. And that's why I always try to preach these budget sticks. Because um, I think that there's so many great budget cigars that get overlooked by the cigar snobs of the world. Um, you know, I've heard them referred to as band smokers. Um, and again, I'm not shooting down name brand cigars, because there's a lot of my favorite cigars are, you know, Oliva. Tatuaje is a big one. You know, um, man. Tatuaje, man, Pete Johnson makes some good cigars. <laughs> 
And A.J. Fernandez makes some great cigars. On that note of intrinsic value and broadening your horizons, I'm enjoying a really interesting uh, tram tonight. This is Santis or Santis. Swiss peated whiskey, cask strength, it's 53%. Um, this is from, from Flaviar. I showed you that box opening the other night. And I had, uh, this is the second one that I've had. The first one I had was uh, Glen Margie Quinta Rubin. And then this is the Santis. The Quinta Rubin was awesome. You know, I don't I don't drink a lot of uh, Glen Margie. I just, the, the, the blend, the, well, the single malts that I've had from them have been solid, but not, not anything special. You know, it's kind of, um, I don't want to put it down. I don't want to say it's, you know, bargain single malt. Uh, but just not what I buy, normally. Um, cigar going off. Um, but this Swiss peat whiskey is interesting. You know, this is the second time I've had it, because it's cask strength. I, I only drank half of this sample. Uh, I drank it maybe two nights ago. I drank half of it, because it's cask strength, and you can cut it with water. Um, and... You know, I was expecting a peated glass of whiskey. I was in the mood for a peated glass of whiskey. And I started drinking this stuff, and uh, I wasn't all that impressed with it. Um, for one, it is a smoky whiskey, undoubtedly smoky, but it's not peaty. In the, in, in, you know, like peat smoke. This is more like wood smoke. And if you're not familiar with peat, peat is like um, compressed organic matter. It's like halfway between coal and dirt. Um, you know, there's peat bogs that kind of it can be soggy, I think. But if you ever see it, 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 they cut it into blocks right out of the ground. It, it's 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 up just just under the topsoil. Um, you know, they don't mine it like they do coal. It's closer to the surface, and like I said, it, it's crumbly. You know, it's between between dirt and coal, um, and it's got a very distinctive taste when you burn it. And the reason why we have peated scotches is because it, um, you know, it comes to the whole process of how you make uh, a single malt scotch. You take barley, right? Barley grain, we're probably most of us familiar with it, but it's basically like a seed, you know, it's a grain. And so what they do is they malt it, which is they put it in a warm barn kind of thing, squirt it down with water, and warm it up. Uh, and what that does is that germinates the barley, so it, it kind of starts to sprout a little bit, and what that does is that converts some of the starches into sugar, but they want to stop it, because they, they're not trying to grow barley, they're trying to malt the barley, so they just kind of get it to sprout a little bit, at least get that process going, and then they want to dry it up, and, and stop that process right there. So to dry it up, they crank the heat, dry it out, and they don't have, you know, a lot of coal and a lot of timber, places like you know, the island of Isla, but they have peat, so they would burn peat, peat smoke goes through the wet barley, and the barley, you know, um, those phenols and things get stuck to the barley, get smoked, and then that transfers to the spirit. So now you know why we have peated spirits. Um, this does not taste like peat, this tastes like wood smoke. This is like, a, almost like, I want, I want to say it's a hickory, but it's kind of that barbecue-y kind of flavor. It's like barbecue-y, um, this sounds like a terrible description, but it does have a, I, I get, like a tiny sweet sour note to it, almost like, um, like if you had like an undercooked bacon that maybe sat in your fridge for a day too long, you know, it's probably still edible, but it's got a little bit of a, what is that, a little funk to it, and that's what I smell here, and that's not what I was expecting the other night. And, uh, you know, I drank it. it. It's definitely drinkable, but I didn't really enjoy it all that much. You know, only because it wasn't what I was expecting. And, you know, that kind of really heavy wood smoke flavor isn't really what I go towards. It's not quite like, you know, somebody put liquid smoke in here. Um, it's not that. But, 
it's not far off. It's very, very smoky, wood smoky. You know, like, 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 like bacon -y. So if you're the kind of person who, like, wants, you know, bacon-flavored chapstick and bacon-flavored chewing gum and all that stuff, you'd probably love this. But what's cool with these flabby art things, um... Now I know. This is not something that I would try a bottle of. I'm really glad I got to try it. Because it's always fun to try new things. And this isn't, it's not terrible. But if I would have paid 50, 60 bucks or whatever these bottles go for, um, I'd have been a little disappointed. It would take me a long time to get through a bottle of this. So I'm glad I got to try it and move on. And that's uh, that's the cool thing about being part of a, a subscription service. You know, whether it's Cigar of the Month or Beer of the Month or, um, you know, Spirits. Is it gives you a good chance to try things and see what you like. It's just like trying a single with a cigar before you buy a box. So, uh, and I'll tell you what, and I did this on purpose to pair these because this is very peppery, um, peppery and earthy and deep. And I'll tell you what, the cigar really brings out a lot of the sweetness in this, but the pepper and the wood smoke are just great together. Gives you almost like a jerky kind of experience. Really great. So the pairing, I'm in, I'm actually enjoying. Again, I still wouldn't buy a bottle of this, but you know, since I had half, I knew what kind of cigar I was going to pair with it, and that's what I did. If I can keep it lit, because I'm talking a lot. But yeah, that's what's up with my Monday. Hopefully everybody's doing great. You know, I haven't been posting many cigar videos lately. I know that. I'll try to get some more out. You know, I've been putting content out here, here, and there. But, um, you know, I, I really do. I can't recommend enough for you guys who want full-bodied cigars. Give this man a word a try. Because it's something. And um, if you're interested, check out Flaviar. I think it's such a cool service. I'll put the link to their website um, under this video. Again, not not paying, not getting paid to say that. I just think it's cool. Although I did not did not buy this, Flaviar sent this out to me, but uh, to to show the service. But I, you know, if I like something, I'm going to tell you I like it, and I, I think it's a cool service. So I'll put the I'll put a link to uh, to Flaviar down there if you guys are interested. And if you do want to subscribe to Flaviar, um, shoot them an email and say you saw it on Poolside Cigar Reviews, so they know that uh, the sample they sent me was was worth their time a day because I do think it's a cool product, and I wouldn't like to. Get. So, anyway, everybody, I'm going to cut it, cut it long with that. So, hopefully you guys are gearing up for a great week, or whenever you watch this, hopefully you're uh, happy and healthy and doing well, and your family and loved ones are too. So, I'm going to watch the clouds drift past this moon here and finish this cigar. And until next time, everybody, keep your feet in the pool, a drink in your hand, and a cigar in your mouth. Take care.